Hey everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. So in this video, we are going to process the walnut that I got last week. So that's what this video is going to be. Uh, it's going to be just general roughing out, uh, chainsaws, um, and coring. I'm going to do probably a lot of coring. I want to see if I can get a, a large number of bowls out of one blank. So that's what this video is going to be. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Uh, you know, anytime you hit that like button, it certainly helps out my channel as well. So it's really hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to block this up, split it in half, and then get it in the shop. And then we'll, we'll talk about it because it's just too hot over here. Okay, I said I'd talk about these once uh, we got them in out of the sun. I was, I cut, if you haven't seen any of my other roughing videos, I have, you know, I always cut the hearts out of the bowl blanks. You don't want to leave the, the center, the heart of the tree in any of your bowl blanks if you're relatively new to turning. So these are not a loss. You can see this one's got some really bad splits in it. But from here to here, are basically small cutting boards, if you will. There's a lot of nice wood here. So what I'll do with a lot of these is I will actually uh, turn them into spoon blanks or anything like that. And um, so, yeah, I mean, like here to here, this is all good wood. We just don't want the, uh, the heart in any of our bowls. So that's what I was doing. If you're curious, if you're new to turning, if not, then you're like, yep, that's exactly how I do it. Now this one log on the end, it had splits like this. So the problem with this is, this is kind of risky to turn. If you've got a crack that goes all the way through a, a bowl blank, well it certainly can fly apart and uh, come off and hit you and, and really do some damage to you. So I poured some glue down in here and I think it goes to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off on the bandsaw and hopefully it's good wood below that. And then we can just get rid of all that. And again, you could use this for bottle stoppers, you know, smaller, smaller stuff like that. By the way, I'll show you how I run these on the bandsaw and then we'll get to the lathe. Okay, so if you haven't seen my roughing burls and logs video, I'll briefly go over what I do with the bandsaw here. Um, so the swing on my lathe is actually 20 inches. And so I always use a 19 inch template for anything that's pinched between centers. And the reason for that is you're, you'd have to have a perfect circle in order for it to spin. And the likelihood of that is very remote. So I initially put the 19 on here, but found that it actually is gonna miss here on the sides. So this, this will start at 18 inches on this bowl blank. So I just set it up, center it. I just use a Phillips <laughs> screwdriver. High tech. So I'll take that over to the bandsaw, round it. Once it comes off, I use a spade bit 
And um, this is a little bit larger than my live center on my tailstock. I'll drill down through the bark, and then that way when I'm setting the bowl blank onto the, the, um, the lathe, it actually can rest on here so you're not really rustling with it. So we kind of rest it on the tailstock and then bring it up forward and, and center it up the way you want to. So anyway, that's basically how I round everything. Once around it, I take them over and place them, uh, I put some plastic over them. I don't put it tight because I don't want them to get moldy. Um, time is the enemy right now. Once you've cut this stuff up, it's, I mean, it's starting to crack already. So, you know, you got to get it done. By the way, that's basically how all the bowls are rounded. I prefer rounding everything before it goes on to the lathe because it is much, much faster um, to cut this in a circle than it is to knock all these corners off on uh, the lathe. So it's best to do it on the bandsaw. Earlier, if you remember, I showed I put some glue on this one and I said I was going to cut it off. So, it pretty much ends there. There might be a little bit of a split further in, but by the time that bowl blank gets whittled away, um, that crack should be totally gone. So the next step is to rough the outsides of these. I'll throw an end grain sealer on them uh, so that they don't, they don't crack on me. And once I've got them all, the, all the outside profiles done, I will do some coring. Anyway, nothing goes to waste. All these offcuts, they'll be burned for firewood. Okay, so we're getting ready to mount this on the lathe. Um, all I use is a drive center and a live center. And uh, this is the one-way chuck and the spur drive that goes with it. And you know what? Um, this is really all you need. Just make sure that, and I'll show you, I'll, I'll dig these in deep and then continue cranking down until I really can't tighten it anymore. It's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, I've also taken a Forstner bit and hollowed this out. This bark is so thick that it was going to ride on the live center. So the original hole is still there from the spade bit. But uh, yeah, I've just used a Forstner bit to make it larger so it doesn't hit. So balancing the bowl is important. And what I mean by that is end grain to end grain. So that you haven't got a lot of heart on this side and hardly any on the other. So that's the main reason why I do this. So we'll line that up and then we'll get a look at it. Now I find it's a little heavy on this side. So lay that down like that. Now that throws your, your bowl out of balance, but in the end, when this is whittled down to here, and this is the same, the bowl will look more balanced uh, when it's sitting on the table or you know when it's being used. Uh, the other thing is, when I initially turn the lathe on, 
I have a variable speed lathe, I have that luxury. Um, I dial it down, turn it on, pick up the speed until I get vibration and then just back it off there. And then as you whittle this away and make it more round, you should be able to increase the speed. Look at that, beautiful stuff. I like these uh, natural edge walnut bowls with the contrast and color between their early wood and late wood. So anyway, I'll just cut this foot in and uh, that'll be it. I've showed this in other videos. Sorry, sorry about the background and the noise, but I gotta have a fan on it, it's just too hot. So, you know, this is just kind of a gauge. This is the biggest foot that my Stronghold trucks will take with the number two jaws, I think. Number two, number three, can't remember. And this is the smallest. So, a bowl this size, I want to make it pretty much as big as I can. To give me lots of gripping power, lots of mass when we core. So, that's what I'll be doing if you see me using it. That's covered on other videos, too. There, there we go. Hopefully the uh, the bark will stay on this. We've got a nice 
easy transition here. Uh, and again, uh, the plan is to pour these. Thought I'd show you this. So I'm finally got all these profiles roughed out. Now there are 12, now this is just one log. So I've got uh, 12 really large bowl, bowl blanks. So now I'm gonna do some coring. And uh, the hope is to get an additional two more bowls per blank out. So if we've got 12 now, hopefully we're gonna end up with 36. So that's what's up next. Okay, so I'm just gonna briefly explain um, this system. Again, it's all explained on the um, huge maple burl and cherry crotch coring video, so check that out. But essentially, I have a 20 inch lathe this is the base that goes along with the one-way coring system. Um, and so this bowl here is 15 inches. Now, if this was say a 19 inch bowl blank, I would use my number four to take out or to set the rig, because that will give me a, the biggest bowl on the biggest core, sorry. So this is a smaller bowl, so that means I'll use my number three. So I used the number three spacer that goes up against, my banjo goes up against the lathe headstock, and then this, and then the base of the unit right up against it. Put the number three knife on there and bring it out to where you want, how thick you want your outside bowl to be. And if you're new to turning, is typically one inch for every um, 10 inches in diameter. So if this is 15 inches, this outside bowl blank should be uh, an inch and a half thick. So I'm just roughly doing this right now. I'll put that there. That's about roughly an inch and a half. I'll lock this down, snug it up. This is not, you know, I try to always do it, but I don't think that it's like an absolutely crucial thing. But square the jig up, 
to the lathe bed. If things are square, that's typically always better. And then lock it down. Now, if I wanted to, I could turn the lathe on and go in after I put the cutter on this, of course, and take out this bowl blank, this big bowl blank right here. But I've already got a tendon turned on it on here. So what I'm going to do, this doesn't move from now on. This is my number two setup. I'll bring the support around and you'll see in the video. So the knife will ride on the support and then I'll just bring this in. So I can move my tailstock out of the way and take out the first bowl. Then once I've got the first bowl taken out, this comes out. I'll put my number three in and get the second bowl. And then of course the outside bowl, the money bowl is intact. But essentially, the way these are, light, are laid out is um, in the spacers is you, you're using a, you're leaving about an inch of thickness in the base of the bowl, and that will give you uh, more than enough room to turn another tendon on there or, or do whatever you want to do it. Okay, so the base is locked down in place where I want it. Uh, and remember, I had my number three in here, bringing it out, measuring it uh, where I want it to to be. So. Like I said, we start with number two, and this is the number two support. So initially, that will go up against here. The cutter will ride on that, and that will give it support. And then eventually, once this goes in deep enough, I'll turn this around and slide it in and follow the knife as it goes in, all the way to the base. Put this up here and we'll lock it down. Now I should also mention that when you do some coring, you actually need a fair bit of power. So if your lathe is underpowered, you might have some issues. You might even see this two, ho this two horsepower lathe stall. Uh, it takes a fair bit of power to do this stuff. So I have my lathe down on its lowest setting. It's its most powerful torque setting. And uh, I mean, I've done stuff that's pretty close to the maximum diameter of this lathe. gets a little tougher to do as you go down near the base of the bowl and that's because you're cutting into end grain and of course we don't want this to snap off and come flying out so you know I'm probably pretty close to stopping it now and trying it with the screwdriver try and pop this out of there actually try that right now oh look at that here we go it's closer than I thought so there, you know, you've got an eight inch bowl. Uh, that's about as small. I really don't even like to go uh, this small. Uh, but anyway, I'll grip that with the with the chuck, put a, put a foot on the bottom of it, a tendon on the bottom of it, core this out, and there's our first bowl. So let's go for number two right now. Okay, so I've got my number three knife and the number three uh, support.
I should also mention you'll see me extracting the knife and cleaning it off. You'll have to do that as you go in. Usually out near the, uh, the top of the bowl, it's usually not that big of a deal. But um, as you go deeper into the bowl, you have to extract it regularly and clean it off. Like I said, I would per prefer to pop it out this way and have it flying across the room and potentially eating. I like walnut, but I don't like it that much. So there you go. I'll just flatten the bottom on this. And there you go. This has got an even wall thickness all the way through it. Just do the bottom and that bowl is done. Clean this one out, uh, measure the wall thickness, and it's done as well. Okay, so this is a 17 inch natural edge. I don't feel comfortable turning this without the tailstock in place. This is a pretty big piece of wood. I've got the extender in and I've actually got a little block of wood. Uh, and I mean, I've just got pressure pushing this way to hold it in the chuck. Um, again, check the chuck regularly through turning because maybe it'll vibrate loose, uh, so on and so on. But you know, I've read, this is all I've really got. I've got this set about one and three quarters of an inch in thickness on the outboard end. It's going to core out this big block. Uh, we'll stick, stick it aside. I'll pinch it between centers and put a foot on it, mount it back in the chuck, and uh, core out the next one. So we'll be able to get three out of this. So this will be the one, I'll show this one kind of all the way through it, and then um, maybe some shots of some other ones I'm gonna core, and that's it.
Mark. So what do we got? We got a uh, about 12 and a half inches is what this bowl is here. So I should be able to do another one and uh, that'll be it. Okay, so we are all done coring. Um, so as you can see, I said originally that I was looking for, what was it, 36. And we ended up with 30. Some of them just aren't worth doing again. Uh, if you tried to core that again, it's going to be nothing on what, it's pretty much just sap wood now anyway. So, you know, walnut's supposed to be a dark color and not white. So I don't see the... I don't see the um, the point in doing that. And a lot of these bowls, you might even say, are pretty much just, well, there's not much you can do with it. There's, there's a good example of what that would look like if it was cored again. So, you know, the big money is in the second bowl. And if you look at, <clears throat> if you look at the cost of finished products that I have here, it would pay for the coring rig that I have, and then some. You know, if you've got if you've got twelve large bowls that, you know, when finished are between ten and um, twelve inches in diameter, well, you know that should be anywhere between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars Canadian in finished product. Well, that pays for that entire system. So it's worthwhile getting one. If you do any amount of uh, bowls at all really and you know it'll probably pay for itself the first big log that you get so anyway these just have to be trimmed up for thickness they're not the especially the big outer bowl and then I'll get an end grain sealer on them and that's it they'll be in the drying shed okay so that's it for the video um, Sorry if it's so long and bored you. Uh, I find it very difficult to show all the steps involved in taking a bowl from log form uh, to a roughed out thick form. And if you're curious, the, um, the, the worst part about any of the, the, uh, the roughing out is getting it basically the outside round to this profile you want. And that typically was taking me anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes-ish in there per bowl it depends on the bowl uh, the natural edge bowls take more time to do because you have to whittle away, whittle away more uh, material where the the conventional bowls like this where if you just basically strip off the bark you've got a bowl shape but when you do natural edge of course you're going the other way so there's a lot more material to, to remove and speaking of that here's a couple of our Big bowls, I think that's uh, probably 16 inches, something like that, 16, 17 inches. And this was the core that was in it. And the great thing about the cores is they're pretty much all dark walnut. Um, I believe these are English walnut. There seems to be a lot of uh, sapwood on them. So I think that's what they are. And that's fine, that'll still make a beautiful bowl. I'm what's called a twice turn turner. So I rough things out thick put them in the shelf in my drying shed for two or three months to dry and then I run them through my freezer kilns which I'll do a video on whenever I get an old uh, upright freezer to do it because uh, I know I get a lot of interest in that too but I, I can't do one until I get an upright freezer so I need my my bowls thick and the other thing too that I'm known for is I do a lot of inlays in the rims 
So in order to do an inlay in the rim, you have to have that thickness. So anyway, hopefully everything was clear enough for you. Um, and again, every time you hit that thumbs up, you certainly help my channel. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I've looked in my analytics and I noticed that a lot of the people that are watching my videos actually haven't subscribed to my channel. So uh, if you could do that, that would be awesome. Thank you very much. So anyway, next two or three videos are going to be on inlays. I'm going to get back on that. I know it's a very popular thing, so I want to get back to it. But anyway, till then, stay safe, take care, and we will see you at the next video.